Let's play a game called AI or Real. The average image is looked at for less than one second on the internet. I'll give you three seconds per image, and you tell me whether or not these are AI images or real photographs. I'm gonna mix them up, and at the end, just tell me your count for how many of them were real. Okay, I just showed you about eight images. How many of those images were real? If you guessed zero, you're correct, because that was a trick quiz. Just to illustrate the point, those are all AI-generated images, and that's why photographers are worried about this technology. I did some research on the top 10 gigs that a photographer is likely to get paid for. These are industries or segments of industries, mainly for professional photographers that may be affected by AI. Let me break it down for you. Number one, stock photography. Bad example to start with because people that create stock photography are going to be hurt by the ability of mid-journey to fulfill my needs. Over the years, I've worked for companies with big budgets to just buy stock because it was cheaper than getting a photographer and you could accomplish more or less the same thing. There were some downsides. You might end up with the same image as someone else on their website. AI is definitely gonna impact that. The other side of the coin is that Adobe has mentioned they are going to pay individual creators for adding to their library of images, which is essentially like the stock photography market is today. So maybe it balances out. Adobe is pretty big and they could potentially make a big splash in that industry. Product photography. This one is completely safe in my opinion because Midjourney does not have a good way of explaining a specific product. Not yet anyway. There's not a product that I'm aware of. This would be a good one for someone to build a 3D model into an AI generated image would be super cool. But product photography is too specific. If you're talking about fashion, if you're talking about an item that is unique in its look, good luck getting AI to do that for you. You're going to spend way more time than getting a photographer. Guaranteed photographers are safe on that one for now. Real estate photography. Now, AI can generate realistic images of houses and things like that, but can it get the specific space that you're talking about? I want the real experience as a buyer of a home. If I'm touring it virtually, I would like it to be 360 cam, whatever is fine, but I want it to be the real house. I don't want it to be a render. So if I'm right about that and what's required in the real estate industry, I think for the most part, real estate photographers are safe. Event photography. This is like weddings, parties, conferences, other social gatherings. I think these are completely safe because the core of what you're looking to capture is human to human interaction. And people wanna see people that they actually know, not just some generated fake person or a group of generated fake people having a good time. That's weird, okay? <laughs> Event photography is probably totally safe. Portrait photography. Now this one could depend. If you're getting a portrait of your family, again, it's back to the relationships that you've built. You know these people, you want to represent real human beings. Some types of artistic portraits and advertisement photography could be at a slight risk, depending on the nature of the actual ad. Documentary photography. So documenting real life events, it's gonna be real people talking about this stuff. Now going back and creating a documentary about something that happened, maybe you have a record of what was said and you need AI to augment it. They already do that, but they just use reenactments and sometimes they use 3D renderings. I can see for a portion of that industry, AI affecting it fashion photography, if you're talking about a specific garment that was made or is made for production, we're talking about fashion week or whatever, it's gonna be really hard for you to get the exact garment with AI for now. There are technologies like Clo 3 d and some of these other things that are 3D renderings. And again, if we combine 3D and generative images, then perhaps that might take a little bite out of that industry. But for the most part, I think fashion photography is safe. Wildlife and nature photography, there's gonna be two classes of that. If you have fake nature, is that what people wanna see? Probably not. Fine art photography is open because if you can create some kind of emotion out of this image, whether it's AI or not, 
At some point, it's gonna be very hard for people to tell. And at that point, the industry will be affected. So those are sort of 10 high level things. And I hope if you're a photographer, that's a little bit comforting because it's not gonna be tomorrow. And AI is just gonna be a tool. I would actually suggest that you look up generative fill for fixing some of your images, especially if you're a wedding photographer, because I bet you have all kinds of photoshopping to do. I'm Nick, this is Design is Blank. Next time is the showdown between facial, AI, mid-journey versus Adobe. It's a head-to-head -head battle, three-round thing. I tried to make it as fun as I could, and the results were really surprising. Check it.